back to another video. Today might be the one day of the season that I've been most excited for. Today we are going heli skiing in Silverton, Colorado. It, this place is beautiful. All we hear is like crows and nothing else. It's just mountains and crows and beautiful skies. Uh, there's this restaurant right here, so I don't know where the sign is, but we're gonna go eat. Then we're gonna get ready for probably the most insane day of the season. See anyone that you think? Um, oh, let's see. All right, it's not a big. Perfect. Problem. We talked about Beacon Shovel Pro backpack. Is this the first day you're skiing here this season? We've been skiing at uh, Crested Butte. But oh. here is the first day. Silverton? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So everywhere where there's not trees here, that's an avalanche slide path. The only place we've cut trees out is the lift line right here. And that's probably one of the easiest runs available here at Silverton Mountain. Just to give you guys an idea of it's a backcountry environment you know we're going to be really remote so we want to kind of ski in that kind of fashion right we want to scale back our aggressiveness of our skiing so that we don't have an injury right we don't have ski patrol waiting around to deal with an accident often when someone gets hurt i rely on the group to help me out to help get this person down to the helicopter Sometimes it takes us about an hour to get someone to the helicopter to get them here and then you got another hour ride to the hospital. We can bring in Flight for Life to here as well. Even though there's a lot of uh, coverage right now, there's still stumps and rocks and things like that. Um, also in some of the terrain we're going to be in, it avalanched earlier in the season. Now it's got a little bit of fresh snow on it. So when we're in those situations that I'm aware of, I'll point that out to you, that we're in a little thinner snowpack. Um, but just heads up skiing, it's backcountry skiing, right? So my number one goal today is that we just have a lot of fun and that we're safe, right? Um, I guess my number two goal is that we have a lot of fun. Number one goal is that we're safe and that we don't find an avalanche out there, but we're gonna be skiing an avalanche terrain. It's a considerable hazard right now. Yesterday we had it at a high hazard, so that's level four out of five. Today we're rating it level three out of five. So it's a little bit of a uh, sensitive snowpack still. We produced a few avalanches this morning on our heli shoot. You guys will see some evidence of that while we're out there. Okay, so I hear you guys yell avalanche. I'm trying to move off to the side. I'm not successful. I get caught, carried, and buried. Now what happens? Yeah, go find it. Yeah, you guys want to come and find me. First thing you want to think about is your own personal safety. I don't want you guys getting caught in another avalanche trying to find me, right? So you need to think about where you're standing, right? So when we have an avalanche, let's say my clipboard here is the avalanche. All this breaks out like a puzzle, right? Slides down the mountain. This is the track and the deposition zone where someone could likely be buried. All the snow left above the crown, the top of the avalanche, that's called hang fire. Also, the snow to the sides of the avalanche is considered hang fire, right? So, similar aspect, similar elevation. We could find avalanches still around this snow, right? Hopefully, I've left you guys standing in a place that you're comfortable with and the hang fire isn't too bad, or at least you have low angle terrain between you and the hang fire, okay? So, once you're comfortable with where you're standing, as you're talking about the last place you saw me, we're gonna all get out our beacons and go to search so we don't have any distracting signals. Okay, so we established the last point scene. We got everyone on search. We're comfortable with where we're standing. Now what happens? Head down and start a so listening. Search. Should we send the whole team in? No, I think so. No, Not right? This no, right? So we, you know, probably two people, depending on the size of the avalanche, should be sufficient to kind of cover this space. So. If the, if the little barcode here is the last place you saw me, you can kind of move into just above there with your beacons already in the search mode. As you travel through the hang fire, you want to take the most conservative route through that hang fire possible. Get onto the bed surface, two searchers zigzagging down the slope, leaving no bigger than a 60 foot gap anywhere. During this phase, I'm also really visual on the slope. I'm looking for a hand sticking out of the snow, some sort of clue, right? Ski pole sticking out. Just because I see a clue, unless it's like a hand moving, doesn't mean I'm gonna head right to that clue. I need to keep 
zigzagging down the slope trying to find that signal. When I get to the elevation of a ski or a pole, I'll pull on that. No hand connected to it, no boot connected to it. Okay, stand it up. That clue's been checked. Can someone in the group maybe get their probe out for me? Just one person? Okay. All probes are a little bit different, so it's good to be familiar with your equipment. So, so yeah, we kind of throw it downhill. We hold the top of the probe. We pull on it. Kind of shake it. Right? right. So, so they're all a little different. So it's good to be familiar with your equipment. Remind me your name? Melissa. Melissa, thank you. Cool. So Melissa's probe locks right here with these buttons. Um, I've seen when we're training, people want to, you know, they want to perform, they want to move quick. They don't get the probe locked. They start probing, it gets separated, you get snow in there, and now you can't get it closed, right? So always get your probe locked. So when we're probing, two hands on the probe, outward in a spiral motion, okay? Probing full depth of the snowpack. We're looking for something that's a different depth than the, than the bottom, okay? Once we get a probe strike, we'll leave the probe there. Flat ground, perpendicular to the slope. If I've got a slope like this, slight angle, I probe perpendicular to the slope, right? For shoveling, you can have one person really close to the probe, digging super hard, people behind them basically clearing snow to give that person a place to put the snow. That person up front will probably last about 30 seconds, maybe a minute if they're in really good shape. And they're gonna be exhausted, okay? And they're just gonna yell rotate, they're gonna move to the back of the line, everyone will take a step forward. You wanna be careful not to get too close to someone who's digging hard so you don't get a shovel to the face or something like that, okay? Do you have any comments or questions about any of that? Have people like gotten buried here before? Um, we've never had a client be fully buried here. So you've had, uh, you guys have gotten buried? Yes. But we've always had successful recoveries on guide burials, so we've, been, we've not had an avalanche fatality here, so hopefully we can keep it that way. Like full burials or partial burials? Um, we've had both. Oh. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, we expose ourselves the most, right? Like, um, we also don't want to bring you guys into any terrain we're not comfortable with, but snow is really complex, and the more you learn about it, the more you learn that it is complex and unpredictable, right? All the people that I consider to be experts and gurus, people that have 30 plus years of experience, they'll tell you there's no experts. When you see snow moving around you. No, no, oh, wait, no, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> when you're waving. <laughs> Everyone feel good? Any questions before I take off here? No. Who's going okay? Feel good.
Crested Butte definitely warmed us up for this. Yeah, that's a steep mountain. Yeah, definitely terrain there is some of the gnarliest. Should I go next? Thank you. Awesome. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I've never skied snow like that. Oh, you don't get that back in New York. No, no.
Alright, we're in a no fall zone. Huh. Yeah. Now we're good. <laughs> Oops. It was going smoothly until that. Yeah. Oh, there's snow on my butt. Wow.
Thank you. All right, going good? Yeah, I was going smoothly. I think uh, I crossed edges, or, or no, I'm um, crossed tips. I think, right. I think that's what happened. Dude, your skis are wide. What are they? Give me a We're in the K2 pontoons. Have you been like that? Oh, yeah. Well, the deep stuff. So that you just float on it, right? Fucking legs. Pretty steep in there. Yeah. What are your thoughts on today? Um, check out that cornice Sweet. up there. Yeah. We just skied that up there. That's a good idea to get the picture. Nice.
Did I sit here? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. That's why I moved over. <laughs> we got people, more people coming. Good work, man. Good work awesome. out there, brother. You brought us to some of the... Alright, I'm sorry I didn't talk to you guys as soon as I got to the room. I had a bit of altitude sickness. Um, my muscles were really cramped and I just felt like super cold, so I laid down for a while. Um, I feel good now, my head kind of hurts, but I just need to drink a lot more water. And if I wasn't so tired right now, I'd describe to you guys how unbelievable today was, but it was something I wanted to do my entire life, or I, I shouldn't say entire life, more like the years I've been into advanced skiing. And the fact that we finally did it today was just, I like, I'm speechless right now. So the whole way to finish off the day is to go to a steak dinner and have a good time. We're heading out of Silverton tomorrow morning, but it was a great time. Um, we're heading to Telluride tomorrow. And yeah, you guys can really see how tired I am. But one more thing I want to mention is how awesome these guides were. They put their lives on the line to just to just make sure we have a good time. Um, it's not really much of a danger to the clients, but rather to them themselves. Um, so I'm super grateful. Like when you grow up here and you get into that lifestyle, I didn't get that, but it's still just amazing to me. So anyways, we're going to go get food, have a good time. Um, I'm going to relax for the rest of the night too. When we get back, um, I'm not going to mention much to you guys, but you know what? Today was unreal and I hope you guys enjoyed watching that.